and welcome. It's Matthew David, the Minister of Allowing. Is anybody out there? If you're out there, just let me know you're here. And um, we'll get this party started. Welcome, Alex, Anisha, Josh. I see you guys popping on now. The title for the transmission tonight is going to be called Blockchain It. Welcome, Andrea. I suppose Ryan's here too. Welcome, Tom, Mikkel, Vito, Dave, Randy. Um, let's see, Alex and Anthony. We got a little bit of a different format. I'm going back like retro. I used to do these formats. When I get the time, I'll do them. This week, I put a little more time into it. Since we got uh, Reverend Sabrina doing Wednesday nights, I will um, put a little more time some into some of these transmissions. So this one's better for your visual learning because you're going to see the PowerPoint, and I'm also going to put some uh, video into it. I have some pre-recorded videos, so I got to let uh, let you guys know that's in there. This could go a little bit long because I am breaking something down really, really deep. And you may have heard a lot of these concepts before, but I'm going to show it to you in a way that once your mind sees it, you're going to be like, man, I got that. See, this is what I've been able to do lately. I've done this a few times where I've been able to use this process and have things manifest. And it's really kind of exciting because you can watch the world stir up all around you. The world will stir up. It'll start to freak out because you're taking power away from it. And it'll attack you then. And then right after the attack, it'll just happen. It'll just fall in your lap. So it's kind of the way the Bible describes it. Satan comes to steal the good seed that's sown. I'll break down the parable of the sower in a way that you've never seen it before. So let's see here. We got, hey, Randy, we got Bobby. We've got Stefan. Queenza, Tom, Vito, Mitchell, Rosalie, Roxana, and I know Sabrina's here, and so let's get this, um, I'm going to just take a little swig of my kombucha, I got my my 40, what is this, a 43 ounce of kombucha that I drink like every night, I don't know what it is, but after two hard workouts every day, this seems to like refresh my whole body before I go to bed. All right. So this is how to engender your reality in a trustless world. So let's get into the transmission. So the problems with the world right now, as if the world itself wasn't the problem, but just look around you. Do you see strife, chaos, disorder, and disease? The world of form is becoming aggressive and hostile. Well, what happens is when you start to awaken, the world of form becomes more aggressive, more hostile around you. That's the way it works. Now, you see trillions of dollars are freely given to institutions that perpetually lose money. They pump up the markets to make everything look like there's no problem and all that stuff goes on. And yet, you know, the homeless population just keeps increasing and increasing. And okay, we know that there's problems in the world. When more and more people are struggling to keep up with daily living. That's why you got to tithe, just so you know, because your, your understanding isn't going to do it for you. I'll just put it out there like that. Now, the pulpits around the world are still preaching about a man they keep waiting to see. Now, that's mind-blowing in and of itself, because that would undo everything Jesus did on the cross. And the world, bottom line, is never going to change. So if you want to change the world, don't change the world. You won't. You need to change consciousness. And by changing consciousness, then you will live in a different world. You will be in a parallel world. That's quantum physics. That's what Jesus meant when he said there are many mansions in my father's house. You're here to overcome the world, bottom line. It's not going to work by watching fear porn, and it's not going to work by attacking what you think is the problem. If you think corporations are the problem or governments or, you know, all these things are the problem, by attacking back, you become the problem. You actually become one with that same frequency. So the question is, is who's behind all of these corporations? Who's behind 
behind all of this stuff. It's not who you think. It's not a man. The actors that you see outside of you in the world of the dead, they're dead vessels in a sea of space. This is a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual school. So here's a video I made. I want you to watch this video. So I'm going to push play, and I want you to tell me how the volume and the sound is because, really, this is the only option I have to play this. So give me an idea of how this is playing, please. So what's the problem with money on the earth? What's the problem with it? Here's a 50. It says, in God we trust. So there's the truth in plain sight. We, as spiritual beings, live in the mind of God. We are created through a trust contract with God. So if we're in a trust with God, it's telling you in plain sight that you live inside a trust. There has to be a performance for that trust to operate. So we have to know what does God want and what do we get? Well, God wants us to know him and to love him. That's what God wants. What do we get out of the deal? We get the kingdom. And what is the kingdom? Well, God already gave it to us. That's the thing. It's the imagination and it's spirit. See, we know the story. God sent his son, his only begotten son, who died on the cross and gave us eternal life. Okay. His son was created in his image and likeness. And so are you. Image, imagination, likeness, spirit, imagination, spirit, eternal. But see, what we have here is we have in God we trust, the truth in plain sight. And then we have something temporal. We have this Capitol building. And we have the United States of America, okay? And then we have here, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. So it's for debts. It's for those who live under a debt slave system. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying you shouldn't use these. If you're going to be in Babylon, you might as well use Caesar's money. This is Caesar's. This belongs to Caesar. Render under Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So Caesar, what is Caesar? Here you go. You're looking through human eyes. The irony of it. How could you possibly be looking through human eyes when I could be thousands of miles away filming this and you're looking at the scenery around here? You're not physically here. How are you seeing this? How is something becoming visible to you thousands of miles away? Are you remote viewing? Are you clairvoyant? You don't consider these things because you're sleeping. You're sleeping. Here's the deal. You're not seeing this at all. Your mind is telling you that you're seeing this. And where is the information coming from? It's coming from out there. The kingdom isn't out there. It's not there. Now quantum physics says that all of these structures here, everything you see is 99.999997% empty space. Oh, why am I tricked? Why am I so fooled to believe it's there? Well, the ancient Vedic knowledge is that infinite worlds appear and reappear in the vast expanse of my consciousness, like motes of dust dancing in a beam of light. Wispy fluff flickering in and out of existence, like still image frames in an old movie projector, where the image flashes and the next image flashes and the next one and the next one and the next one so fast that it looks like a continuation of one event occurring through time and space but it's not 
So what is money? Money's an idea. What does it represent the idea of? Supply. And so where are we looking for supply? Out there. We're looking out there. We're trying to get these. Well, this won't get us very far. This is just 50. But if we had a thousand of these, or maybe a couple hundred thousand of these, we'd be doing all right. Well, what's the difference between this and monopoly money? Ah, we've all come to an agreement. We have an agreement. In other words, we have trust. But it says in God we trust. It says in God we trust. What is God? God is a spirit. John 4. God is a spirit. Are you telling me that this is of God? Is this note of God? Well, let me ask you the question. It says this note is legal, tender for all debts. It's this is the creation of this note is to tender for the debt that you are enslaved as the prodigal son living through your five senses. So Caesar is the God of this world and this is Caesar's money. This belongs to Caesar. It doesn't belong to you ever. It belongs to Caesar. So when you put your value in this, and you store your treasure in what belongs to Caesar. Well, does that not make you a Luciferian? Does that not subscribe you to the same hierarchy of control that you say is against you? And yet, according to human reasoning, the coin of the realm meets the need for we lack these things. So we labor under the sweat of the brow to meet our needs because we need more of this stuff. That's what you call a slave. Only slaves have to operate under such forced performance. Now, forced performance is not only slavery, but it's also rape. A forced performance is a rape. Where did this all originate from? Being beguiled in the middle place by your five senses, believing that what you hear, smell, see, taste, and touch is real and giving it your power, allowing it to be your authority, submitting yourself to the law of sin and death. Another name for Satan is death. The world out there. Jesus said, Cursed is the man who sees the son of man and blessed is the one who doesn't. Because if you think this is real, let me ask you a question. It's about 2.15 in the afternoon on Saturday. Here's my hand. Is it 2.15 in the afternoon on Saturday in Sheboygan where you're at? Then how did you see my hand? How did you see that which is physical through your physical apparatus in a different time-space reality?
How did you do it? That's a marvel of marvels right there. It's because you're not physical. It's because there is nothing physical. It's an illusion. And the kingdom is your imagination. And how you repent and turn back to the father is to drop the entire world out there. And to be of one mind. So I'm going to show you a process that I call blockchaining it that will teach you how to be of one mind with what you desire so that you can bring into manifestation the reality you want to surround yourself with. Hello, I'm Julie with Allow Ministries on behalf of Matthew David Hurtado. Are you ready to end self-sabotage, procrastination, and distraction? Clarity, certainty, and a proven plan of action is what it takes to get anything you want in life. Training is the answer. Matthew David Hurtado's Spiritual Millionaire Workshop is the one-step solution that finally puts you in control of your destiny. What Matthew discovered about building a seven-figure business and perfect well-being when he was bedridden and bankrupt with Lyme disease is that mentorship is success without the weight. It works. At AllowUniversity.com, you'll discover how to walk in victory. Learn how to prosper in every area with unstoppable daily habits and a step-by-step -step training to build your dream business immediately following the event, a success training for a lifetime of achievement. Walk in financial increase, living a life you love. Go to AllowUniversity.com and say yes to your destiny. All right. Well, I made that video, obviously, at... I think 2.15 p.m. yesterday. So I'm gonna talk more about that. I'm gonna show you the process. I'm gonna show you some things you've never seen before. And I'm gonna bring you up to speed with what blockchain technology is and why it's the perfect analogy for the coming age of what they would call enlightenment, which we are already part of. But for you, it's going to be the breaking of the, the yoke. We're gonna break the yoke off of you tonight. When you see it, you can never unsee it. So let's get on. This is what's problem problematic in your life, as well as mine, as well as anybody else who's ever struggled with lack of any kind, is you have a virus called the I am not enough program. I am not enough because. So if you lack for any good thing, you have this program. It's also the underlying belief behind most addictive personalities. So if you have struggled with addictive tendencies, this is the underlying reason. The I am not enough. And then you can also insert your compensatory actions that you've take, taken to gain approval. Like for myself, um, I've always been an overachiever. I've always had to perform. When I grew up, I had to perform and be the best at what I did or I didn't get love or approval. And a lot of that had to come with, I'm not enough because my father left me. I'm not enough because et cetera, et cetera. Well, you've got those programs too. Because whenever you identify out there with the law of sin and death, you will adopt this program. Now, these beliefs create an operating system. And you become flawed with hue, man reasoning. Hue means the coloring of. It means distorting the manifestation of God with reasoning. I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. I can't trust. I'm powerless. I don't belong. I'm insignificant. I have to be perfect. Whatever one of those or a group of them kind of stung you a little bit when you think about it is the operating system that keeps you bound out there to that world. It's what you push against in that world. So therefore you become one with what you push against. There's a saying that goes like this. The solution is what creates the problem. The solution is what creates the problem. So look at some of the beliefs here. I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. 
I can't trust myself. I can't trust others. I'm powerless. I don't belong. I'm insignificant. I have to be perfect. These are the most common viruses. See, when you come from one of these beliefs, in, in other words, when you are engendering from one of these sinful ideas, you attach yourself to human reasoning and become one with the very world that will destroy you. You are under the law of sin and death from the start. Therefore, you can't escape it. Because if you start from a corrupted position, you cannot get to correctness. I'll talk more about that when I show you how to blockchain it. These are the six most common underlying attitudes that destroy prosperity. Prosperity means all good things, God's inheritance that has stored up for you. So tonight we're going to clear all that mess up for good. Does that excite you? I hope it does. So let me uh, acknowledge some people here. Let me look on the board here. For I could, uh, Marisol's here. Sasha, I'd love for you to share. I saw some of that you want to share. Uh, write it up in the board, and I'll, I'll read it out loud. Welcome, Trista. Welcome, Dennis, VC. Uh, Ethan, we got, um, let's see who else is here. Beverly, Christian. Uh, Christian. We got Brian. We've got Tony Loppenberg, Anita. Yep. Um, and we've got, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll acknowledge some of this as we go forward, but I want to get back to this, okay? So look at everything around in the world of form. The world around you, the world of form always has and always will run on corruption. Get this. This is why the blockchain technology that we know today is in non-form. That's the big idea, okay? Correctness can only come from non-form. Now, okay, corruption even includes our banking, our law, and our mathematics. Yes, I said even our mathematics, because here's why. Look at the tithe, the power of the tithing principle. 100%. So you mean to tell me that 100% minus 10% does not equal 90% in God's estimation? And I say, it does not. I want you to think harder. Which position are you calculating from? Are you a human? Because you're playing a zero-sum game if you're a human. If you exist in God's image and likeness, the imagination of God in spirit, you always have 100% of God's treasure, the kingdom of imagination, pegged to you as real currency. You can't outgive God and you can't take anything away or add to God anything. That he didn't first create. Now imagine that. If you think that giving leads to losing, no, then you are coming from a human position of reason and you are already under the law of sin and death. If you know that you're in the image and likeness of God, well then you already are complete. You have 100% of God's treasure within yourself already. You can't outgive God Okay, the nature of God is giving, so you align with the nature of God by giving. And you know that as you give, more is given to give. That's the nature of God, because you cannot outgive God, and you can't take anything away from the kingdom. See, that's why your mathematics is flawed. Now, your currency is a state of being via the self-worth or the self-image that you occupy. Again, I repeat. If you begin as a slave, you die as a slave. If you identify as someone who is in the world of Caesar, operating through the Babylonian debt slave system, with your sweat of the brow trying to earn money, that is your self-image. Therefore, you, know, you cannot escape that self-image. For anyone that looks out there to measure your value, whether it's in dollars, shekels, coins, cryptocurrency, bulls, land, real estate, gold and silver, you're a slave. You're looking out there. You've become bound by Satan. See, this person will work by the sweat of the brow, the Babylonian debt slave system, to earn her keep in this artifice world. Artifice is a good word for this. Artificial reality. It's a substitute fake. It's a counterfeit. 
Satan is in the business of counterfeiting. Everything that was true, Satan counterfeited with a shadow version that is false. The world outside of you is Satan's pulpit, is the false counterfeit reality of the kingdom, which is your imagination. So at every ounce of human reason, you're going to be served up a world of incompleteness. Now get this. Here's the big idea. When you learn this in school through your indoctrination camp, they taught you how to solve and fix everything. Well, the only thing that needs to be solved and fixed is something that's incomplete. Now, you keep doing this through repetition, and it'll build an inferiority complex known as the virus, I am not enough. So now you get to assume a burden that you have to carry. Remember? Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light because Jesus is your living imagination. He's in spirit, right? At the right hand of God. Well, where do you think that is? It's in your imagination. It is your living imagination. Jesus is the living imagination. Anyway, if you don't get that, then you might as well go to one of those churches out there that tells you that some man's going to walk the earth again. Here's the deal. If your burden is too heavy to carry, it's because you were never engineered to do so. You're not designed to carry it. Now, while you labor, you may become rich in the world, but if you lack Christ, the human imagination and spirit, as your bedrock foundation for your supply, for your sustenance, you're going to remain a slave because real wealth will be evaporated through the spiritual fractional lending. That's when you give your attention to the world out there and put value in those objects. Those objects store value, and they are counterfeit, counterfeit illusions. Now, that world out there is full of opinions. Opinions means no fact. The word opinion means no fact. These opinions of others will come against you, and they will become debts that you must pay for your sin of giving away your true wealth to the world of form. I'll touch more on this in a few moments. So if you lack Christ, you have obtained nothing. You're still a beggar in the eyes of God, even if you're a billionaire. If you lack Christ, you are nothing more than a beggar in the eyes of God because your treasure is stored in the world of moth or, or the world of, what do you call that, effects, where moth and dust and decay it will evaporate because it's built on nothing. Now, you'll have to sell all to follow Christ. And you know what that means? It means you have to break all of your ties to all of your ideas that you've planted in that wealth out there that you perceive is real because it comes from a rootless place of the artifice substitute material counterfeiting. Satan is the counterfeiter. Now, entering the realm of Satan's pulpit outside of you, when you look outside in your external kingdom, taking validation for your identity, this is the shadow of truth. The father of lies has beguiled you in this place, and you become stuck and bound. It's called the middle place. It's human reason. Human reasoning has one inherent flaw. Here it is. It believes that this world outside of you can produce effects. It has no cause. It's barren. Even on the Sabbath day, the world out there is barren. It's an empty, dead carcass. This is why Satan is synonymous with death, and we live and have a death culture surrounding us. Ponder it. Now, occupying the self-image of this world... The counterfeit note of a dead vessel in a sea of space, that's what your fashion form body is, looking through human eyes, reasoning through a mind of mortal consensus, you run on a linear time track and you're bound by a Gregorian calendar in a shipping war that Lucifer orchestrates for the captives who have sinned in their heart, doubting God. That's how you got here in the first place. You were sent to a school so that you could repent. Why? Because you have a trust with God and you broke the trust. So you had been sent to a school. And soon as you repent and you 
come to know and love God again, and you give up the world out there for your kingdom of your imagination, knowing that that is the full inheritance of the Father, and rely only on the full inheritance of the Father and nothing from outside of yourself, you will continue to be beguiled in the middle place. This is a maritime condition of state. So you must use your artifice wealth, your counterfeit notes, to compete against other minds and rely on your human talents, fractionalized reserves that bear no authority. And the word awe, A-U, is gold. It has no real wealth, no real value. Ponder it. All the time, talents and treasures are derived okay, from this world, the counterfeit world of fashion form. They bear no authority, no authorization, and they're no authentic good. That's what you call leaning on your own understanding. That's what it means in Proverbs, to lean not on your own understanding. See, in this world, your pride, your money, your smarts, your youth, all of these are counterfeit claims of treasure, and they come with a heavy price to pay because they put you under the law of sin and death. You were never engineered to take care of your own needs in this way. So always, at every turn, you'll be subjected to a fractionalized consensus of a proof of claim. In other words, you'll be clashing against the waves of other opinions. It's like you have a digital wallet, a store of treasure, and it has your public keys and no private keys. You have no encryption. So you are what you called cyber attacked out there. So you walk out there with one idea of what you'd like to do with yourself. And because you mesh with that world out there, that world of corruption, counterfeit claiming itself as real, you get hacked. See, that's what Quimby meant when he said that minds mingle. Phineas Parker's Quimby was the teacher for Mary Baker Eddy who discovered Christian science. Now, Phineas Parker's Quimby used to sit down next to someone, have a conversation with them, and he said, I had two conversations. In one conversation, I was speaking to the physical man, and in the other conversation, I was speaking to the spiritual, the real man. See, he knew. Because he knew that minds mingled, and he knew that the opinions got attached to the senses of the physical man, which created the disease that the man lived in. And so he undid this by talking to the spiritual man and bringing truth to the equation, and truth destroys error. It took me years to discover how Quimby does what he does, but I can do it today, and I've done it several times. Truth destroys error. Now, when you're out there, you're rendered not enough by virtue of poverty because any wealth that you store outside of you is poverty. Jesus was amazed at the great poverty people held in this world when he came into this world, noticing that everybody was drunk and blind. They all looked outside of themselves for a savior. See, in this condition, you've forsaken the kingdom, and you hold the dead treasure of Caesar's bounty. All your treasures are Trojan horses that bind you to a condition of double-mindedness, sin, and the laws of death. Now, Romans 8 holds a secret. As you may or may not know, I had a prophetic dream about 11 years ago. Never read the Bible in this point in my life, but I was prophesied over that I'd become a modern-day Paul about 11 years ago. And at the time, didn't mean nothing to me. But I was sleeping one night, and the Bible opened up, and it was in this, I thought it was an astral projection, but I could see, the, like the heavens opened up, and I saw a Bible open, and it opened to Romans 8.10. And I saw the scripture. So anyways, I took the Bible the next day and opened it up, and it freaked me out, because Romans 8.10 says, if you know Christ be in you, if Christ be in you, then the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I thought I was going to die because the literal meaning of that from the earthly perspective is that, oh, if Jesus is with me, then my body's going to die, which means I'm out of here. That's not what it means at all. 
if Christ be in you, means if your imagination is, then the body is dead, which means the world outside of you is the world of the death, the carcass. Huh? See? Because of sin, right? But the spirit is life because of righteousness. See, turn inward to the imagination, and that's where you'll find life. That's what Romans 8 is about. Let me break this down to you. Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, instantly, it tells you how to break the curse of Satan off your life right there. If you turn away from the world out there and turn to your imagination, which is the living Christ, huh? get this? That's the spirit, yes. Then it says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. That's how you break the Babylonian debt slave curse system. See, you will become one that devours matter from within yourself like the ancient Gnostic texts describe. Okay, And you will come to realize that you are the living Christ and you will occupy that position at the right hand of the Father with Jesus, which is in your imagination of spirit, knowing that that is the only true life you ever lived. The world out there is a dead carcass. Once you know these ideas, read the scripture because it's going to all make sense to you because you're reading it from God's perspective, not from a mortal perspective. You see, the problem with the scripture is that when you start from a corrupted position, reading it as a mortal, you get a completely different understanding when you read it from a spiritual perspective. And first of all, you have to know how the language was corrupted to even get there. This language right here is an adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun. So you have to be able to understand what the meanings are. Or this could really tangle you up. And most all wars are created over religious wars between human minds that are competing with each other. Think about this throughout history. That's why this stuff is dangerous if you don't know what you're talking about. So 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That means when you look outside of yourself in the world of the flesh, looking at people, places, things, objects that you think are physical, that's the world of the dead. That's Satan's pulpit. Another word for death is Satan. You're looking at Satan. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That means to live from the imagination, from the kingdom, you have God's life, and the Prince of Peace is Jesus. So that living imagination is the Prince of Peace, that is the Christ. Now it says the carnal mind is enmity against God. You see, that mind is not what you think. The carnal mind is the entire world of opinions outside of you when you look out there. That is the mind of Lucifer. That mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Do you see this? Do you finally understand that when you look at that out there, that world of dead bones and carcasses, walking around in those meat suits in time and space, captured on a Gregorian calendar with all of their opinions of right and wrong? This is nonsense. You're being tricked at every turn. You are bound under the law of sin and death until you renounce and repent that and walk away from that completely. I'll show you how to do it tonight. See, your self-image governs all of your behavior. If it's rooted in sin, if you think that you really live in this world out there in your five senses, you've adopted the Babylonian debt slave system as your God, subjecting yourself to the law of sin and death. And all of your treasures that you will store up, they all belong to Satan, all of them. Now, this is a secret why the evil ones who worship Lucifer are given the wealth of this world, because their treasures belong to this world and the God of this world. The reason they prosper is because they are serving the God of this world, Lucifer. Now, the man, that religion, which is another thing that Lucifer controls, is the religions of the world. The man, they say, is coming back, the stick figure of Jesus in a meat sack body. See, Jesus rendered that empty shell to prove that life is not in this world. Ponder this. At every turn, when you look out there, you will be beguiled until you turn within. The only God that ever existed is within you. 
if all you can hope for in this world is death in the end, well, then what treasure have you actually stored up? If you don't rise in Christ before your physical death, you will not rise. In this world, you possess that which is not and become adulterated or corrupted. That's what the word adult means. It comes from adulterated, which means corrupt. It's poison. You place your value in the dead things of this world. You forsake the imagination of spirit that frees you from the wages of sin. You give that up for the counterfeit. You gave up the kingdom for the counterfeit at the moment you became adulterated. The moment you became an adult, you gave up your inheritance for the counterfeit and put yourself under the law of sin and death. For what is, is not known to that which is not. Jesus said that material man was foreign to him. You must enter God's domain, the living Christ, your imagination and spirit, and clothe yourself in righteousness. Ponder it. Now you're here because you entered a school because you have sinned. You got here in this school because you took the following steps. Fear. You took reason. You took reasoning from adulterated fools and handed over your childlike imagination. In other words, you took the substitute. You took the bait. You took the crack instead of the nutrients. Confusion. You became drunk in human logic and error, what Jesus would call a fool. Lack of trust. How can one trust that which always deceives him? Of course you can't trust anything in this world. This world is always lying to you. It's the father of lies made manifest. Double-mindedness. Competing minds. Just raise your hand in your own mind if you believe that there are competing minds out there. Sweat of the brow. If you do, you've adopted the virus. I am not enough. Division. You entered the world of form and divided yourself from all that is. In other words, you stepped out of the kingdom and you took a fall like the division symbol where it has a dot above, a line, and then a dot below. So you were above as one with God and then you took the fall. You became less than, less than. So the dream of terror, what is it? It's a schoolmaster. Remember, it's 99.99997% empty space. It's not even there. So what is it? It's a schoolmaster. It's a dream in the night. You're experiencing the Adam dream, the fall of man. It is a dream. Hello, everyone. This is Vernita. I just want to give... Um... My experience at the workshop last November in Wisconsin with Matthew David Hurtado's workshop. I attended the workshop with fibromyalgia, very sick, the fog, in pain. And I believe it was the first day um, he did the uh, uh, entrainment set. And... Um, I experienced immediate, immediate relief from fibromyalgia. Two days later, after returning home, I continued the entrainment sets for one week. I'm honest, just for one week. And um, I'm looking for like side effects from fibromyalgia, pain, dizziness, muscle pain, the fog, all the crap that goes with fibromyalgia, and no symptoms. That was November, December, January, February. I am absolutely pain-free, medication-free, no medications, zero, nada, and uh, no fog, no nothing um, if you ever have the opportunity to attend one of his workshops do so because a miracle will happen attend Bernita Hamblin Fibro fibromyalgia is gone completely bye
And just like waking up from a nightmare to realize it's not there, that's what it feels like when the kingdom of truth comes and destroys it. So Satan is the counterfeiter. He's counterfeiting an artifice reality matrix. That's what the movie The Matrix is about. Satan counterfeits God's kingdom of spirit for the world of fashion form. Material man is a temporal illusion. It's a dream of sin for those who doubted God. Do you really think God, perfect, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, became temporal, flawed, full of error, full of sin? Absolutely not. Satan's world is served up before you as incompleteness and error. When you, look at the word identity, you have an id and it's an entity. You created a persona that you identify as, as a mortal living amongst the other flesh-bound mortals. That's the old man that Paul talks about putting off for the new man. All biblical characters exist as states of consciousness that we have to pass through to become as Jesus. You become one with Jesus, the living Christ, the imagination, the kingdom is your imagination. It is eternal. It is spirit. It is God. Your burden to carry. See, the wages of sin and death operate like modern day banking with fractionalized counterfeiting wealth, value and no gold, no authority to back the treasure. In other words, it's all debt. It's all debt notes. That's the story of the prodigal son. See, the prodigal son, here's a person who has the entire inheritance of God and he goes out and squanders all the wealth and becomes so indebted that he has to come home and throw himself down on the floor exhausted because he can't take it because the wages of sin and death are extreme. Well, in that moment when he finally repents, when he really means it, God's eyes teared up. He's so happy. He's so excited. His son came home. He grabbed the sackcloth of silver and he paid the debts. Well, that's what happens when you do what I'm going to tell you to do tonight and you wake up from the nightmare. So let me show you the nightmare and then I'll show you the way out. With how reality works when you are living from sin and death. You identify as a mortal. Now, the minute you do this, you are under the jurisdiction of sin and death. Now you look out here. And the problem with that is, is you are taught to always try and fix everything from a position of being flawed. Okay. So what happens is you build an identity of I am not enough. Okay. Or I am not. Okay. I am not the solution that I seek. I am not the solution. See, and if you're not the solution, then you can't get to the solution. So reasoning kicks in and it comes from a corrupted position and attempts to get you through a linear time track here, okay? Going through the six degrees of separation through all three of your kingdoms, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. In other words, attempting to do God's job through a false position of identity. So just like an electrical circuit, if you have an electrical circuit here and it goes from here to here, all right, what happens is at every point of thought, every time you add resistance, see, thought is resistance. Every time you add resistance, all those resistors add up, and those resistors are unconsciousness. So you become deeply unconscious. And what I mean by unconscious is, is adulterated. And what I mean by adulterated is you lose the kingdom. You lose your imagination where you exist in the mind of God, the truth is, is you exist in the mind of God as God's idea of his perfect man or perfect manifestation. And so you give this up <clears throat> for this idea that you exist in the world. And then you start creating competing minds, multiple different opinions. And it's a world of no facts. It's a world of strictly just opinions. So in this world, two plus two equals anything 
but for. So the real error here is that you can't get there from there. So the problem with the law of attraction, so let me explain, let me explain this to you, the problem with the law of attraction. So let me go ahead and let's get a new, let's get a new sheet here. The problem with the law of attraction is, okay, here you are. And the first thing you do is I am less than because I am not the solution. You assume a false position through human reasoning. I am not. Okay. This creates a troubled heart. So out of the troubled heart, human beings step into human logic, which is full again of opinions and error. We'll just use OE, opinions and error. That's all it is, opinions and error. Because if God didn't say it, it has no authority, no authorization, no gold. It has no value. Now, humans, out of this frustration, this lack, this position of lack, their heart is troubled. And so that emotional resonance out of the heart creates the issues of life, according to Proverbs. So it sets up a magnetic field, okay? The heart sets up a magnetic field that draws in the particle wave duality, the particle wave world. Again, the motes of dust dancing in a beam of light. You know how the beam of light comes and it shapes the motes of dust. And so this person right here, looking outside of themselves, is trying to get to a solution while looking in a world that multiple minds exist, okay? So what happens is this mind, since you're going to agree that there are multiple minds, you're agreeing with sin, these minds affect you at the level of the heart. And so you are in a quantum soup and you have painted these boogeymen. You put these boogeymen under the stairs. You put them there through your human judgments. And so these judgments come back to haunt you. And so what happens is you can't get there from there. Now I'm going to show you how to blockchain it and what the blockchain method is so that you can engender your reality and let it come to pass. Okay, so I call it blockchain it. I put a little trademark on there. I know blockchain's there, but blockchain it is a new thing. Now, the full meaning of the saying, okay, circumstances don't matter, only state of being matters. Okay, that sounds great. But what does that actually look like? Well, I'm going to show you what that looks like, and the blockchain is the perfect, the perfect analogy here. So when you see this, I want you to sleep on this tonight, literally sleep on this, and let it marinate in your consciousness. And once you make the quantum leap and you truly get this, well, then it's going to get interesting. It's going to get very, very interesting. Your world's never going to be the same because you won't let it be the same. blockchain this thing. Now, if you don't know what a blockchain is, it's really fascinating because you see in the world of banking, when we look at, you know, how, you know, this is the coin of the realm, right? When, when you have real value, okay, it's taken and then it's fractionalized many times and lent over and over and over and over, like up to 10 times, I guess, and 20, I don't know how many they do it, but they, they take the real value, which is guess what the real value is. It's your deposit. And when you, you know, look at the word deposit means no position to stand on. D, posit. D means no. No position to stand on. You have no posit, no place to stand. So everything is in plain sight or you'll never see it. But anyway, all this value is just created out of sort of thin air. And it's backed by a consensus agreement, which is what the word fiat means. The word fiat currency, fiat means let it be done. So it's sort of, it's a sorcerer's spell. Okay, it's a sorcery spell. So what you have is you have all of this going on here. All right. And the issue is, is they sometimes what they call this a double spend or triple entry, triple entry bookkeeping. Okay, double entry, triple entry bookkeeping, right? Double spend. All right. Now the blockchain comes along and it like undoes all of this because 
the blockchain is immutable. It's a, I'll show you, let me show you what a blockchain is so you can see what this looks like because the blockchain is the perfect analogy of how to create reality the, per, the perfect way. Now, imagine we are, you know, at a restaurant. All right, so you're at a restaurant and everything that was ordered on that menu is right there. It's a snapshot image. So we have a snapshot picture of everything you ordered on the menu, okay? Now, that snapshot can be replicated as a perfect snapshot over and over and over so that we can get a decentralized, not a centralized, okay, agreement. We get a decentralized agreement in a trustless position. See, we don't need trust anymore. Now we have data. So we have this perfect, correct data. We have correctness here. And we can put this correctness in a real-time snapshot, okay? It's a now space snapshot of this transaction so that it can be agreed upon by everybody in what's called a blockchain. Now, that's really the simplicity of what it means. It means it's immutable. There's no room for error left over. There's no room for it to be counterfeited. It's, the, it's a fact. So that's the beauty of it. So what we can do is we can do that with our creations. So here's what we have to do. We have to create this perfect blockchain image, okay? In other words, we have to start from the position of truth. We have to have authorization, authority to make a claim. We have to have authority to make a claim. Your authority is only in the mind of God. God is the only authority. We have to do the process of repentance like the prodigal son to come back home to the father, stepping into our imagination. Now, we are in the imagination of spirit right here. All right. We've taken our eyes off of this world out here with all of the competing minds, the sweat of the brow, the time-space continuum, all of this nonsense that we were adulterated to believe, okay? So what we're doing is we're turning our back completely on this. We're letting the world, the dust return to the dust. That which is in the world returns to the world, it is Caesar's. So we step into the kingdom of our imagination and we begin to engender, which means we become one. Engendering means we are not trying to get anywhere. We are coming from somewhere. I have, okay? In our imagination is the completeness of spirit. It is the fullness of God itself. It is where all creation happens, okay? Now, I have, I have the house, I have the car, I have the relationship, I have. Therefore, it's the antithesis of I am not enough. It is I am complete within myself. So what we do with this is we have a snapshot, perfect snapshot image of this, okay? Just like the blockchain. Now, we're not going to allow for Caesar to have thy will be done in a fiat situation. In other words, if I give my wealth to Caesar, if I look outside of myself, I am under the law of sin and death and the wages and the penalties are too high. Your price too high, you need to cut it. Your price is too high, you need to cut it. See, cut it, just cut it. You can't get there from there. What I'm going to do instead, now watch this, this is gonna be life-changing for you, is I am from the fullness of the Father as Jesus. Same scenario. That is the completeness. I have. I lack for nothing. My imagination fills every need, and my peace contract claim in my heart is the proof that I trust God. It's the proof that I have a trust. It's the proof that I'm living in the trust. See, in God we trust. Remember that? Okay, I am in the trust with God. Now, leave them completely out of it. The world isn't there. The world is a dead carcass. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to replicate this exact snapshot, this blockchain. I am gonna replicate this and get consensus 
on this to make a confirmation, okay? Now, how am I gonna get confirmation? Because I have authority, because I'm engendering from within the mind of God. I'm not looking out there for it. I am coming from it, which means I am the authority. So what does that mean? It means that I clothe everything in righteousness. So I don't look outside of myself. I am with this creation in every experience I go to. Now, here's what it looks like if you're going to see it in the realm where you'll understand it. You used to do this. Okay, here's me, here's my lot. I got this car, I've got this house, I've got this money, I've got this relationship and this body, etc. You put them all outside of yourself, okay? The world of form has already beguiled you. That world of form, fiction, has already been programming you. It's your authority. You looked outside in the external kingdom for your reality. So instead of that, I'm going to just drop that world and just kill that former self. I'm going to put off the old man. I'm going to put off the old man. I'm going to step into my imagination of spirit, and I'm going to have what I desire now until it gets into my heart. When it gets into my heart, then I am engendering. Then my heart and my mind are of one accord, which means I will manifest, period. Okay? Now, how is that done? Well, what I'm going to do is no matter where I go, I am going to be this person in every moment that I step into because I realize I used to look out there, but now I realize they're not even there. The world is an illusion. It's not even there. That is corruption. So I am going to blockchain myself in every experience. Now, what that means is when I go to the gym and I look in the mirror, I don't look out there. I look in the mirror in here and I see my perfect body. I carry it with me regardless of what's going on in my external kingdom. The external kingdom belongs to Lucifer. It is full of corruption and lies. It is dead. It is a carcass. It has no root. It cannot create. So when I go to the bank and when I look at my bank, I look at the completeness of what I'm asking for. I have, I have, I have. When I'm in a relationship, okay, of any kind or missing a relationship according to human reasoning, I put it in here, I have it. I take it with me wherever I go. See, I'm creating a perfect picture, a perfect snapshot in every moment that I exist. In every moment, I am planting a perfect seed. A perfect seed produces a perfect harvest because the law of the seed cannot be broken. So this is how you blockchain your reality. Now, let me break it down to you from simple steps. Okay, so that was the blockchain video. So here we go. Let's look at the, uh, let me get back here. Let's go to the next part here. So this is the formula that's revealed for you to follow. It's quite simple. See, the old way that you used to do things, you see a problem, then you reason to find a solution. Now here's where it really gets crossways. Then you act from a position of being less than. In other words, that virus of I'm not enough, I'm insignificant, I'm powerless, whatever it is, whatever your virus is, it's usually I'm not enough, it kicks in, and then you act from that position of being, circumstances don't matter, only state of being matters, get that? You act from a position of being less than, so you put that corrupted seed into your now, which creates a corrupted harvest, and then you don't get a result you want, and then you beat yourself up for not having the result you want. It's because you acted from a corrupt position to begin with. This all comes from I'm not enough. It suffers you from the penalty of being born in sin. That's the old man that Paul put off. It doesn't work. The new man, the new way of being free, is that you hold the peace in your heart whenever you're tempted by a human problem, a human need. 
ah, I'll just go to my father. See, I'm not going to go to the world. I'm going to go to my father. So I'm going to step into my imagination in spirit. And just like Jesus, when he filled the stony pots of the finest wine, I look at the need. I fill it in my imagination. I rest in my peace contract, which means I'm in a trust with God. And I allow God to do what God does. I imagine the need filled until I feel it in my heart. Okay. Now, here's where it gets really cool. See, I'm surrounding myself in my imagination everywhere I go. That means I'm continuously blockchaining this experience in every moment. I'm not looking at what the world out there has to say. It's not even there. That's Lucifer trying to tempt me. Get behind me, Satan. Remember this? Get behind me. Okay. This is where it gets interesting. Do you know what the word expectation means in the ancient, the original 1500s? It means to defer action. Get this. It means to defer action. You see, expectation and infinite patience brings immediate results. Expectation and infinite patience brings immediate results. So what's the opposite? The old man thinks that expectation is being impatient. Well, that's coming from a position of I'm not enough. That means you're engendering from the position of I'm not enough. It means I need it now, I want it now, I must have it now, which means that you're going to do something about it, which means that you are lacking. So you're putting lack in your now and you're creating more lack. You're screwed, man. Doesn't work. So instead, Oh, wow, there's a problem. Remember Jesus said, mine hour has not yet come? He was expressing what real expectation means and infinite patience. So here's a problem, human need, whatever it is. Think of your human need. Think of your human problem. Now, do this. Go into your imagination right now. This is why I created the ABC break process. This is what we get to do. We get to use it. So here's what we're going to do. Just say, snap your fingers, say, it is not it. The world outside of you is not it. Your reasoning mind is not it. Your reasoning mind is married to the world outside of you. You become an adulterer through that reasoning mind. That's what the real world word adultery means. It is not it. Now, here's where you release your impatience. This is when you break the spell and create allowing. Could you allow for just this moment things to be exactly as they are? Yes or no? Could you allow even more for just this moment things to be exactly as they are? Yes or no? Okay, now the next step is we come to a place of peace. That's to create contract with God. That's to come back and do our contract claim. So go to a place of peace in your imagination. Go to a place of peace in your imagination right now. Just sit there. You don't have to do anything. Remember. Expectation means to defer action. So don't do anything. Drop your human reasoning. Drop your human will. That's the highest form of action you can take is allowing. So stop. Cease from all of your activities that you take from a position of I'm not enough. Cease from that. Break the spell. God does the work, not you. God's already given you the full blessing. You're already in it. All you have to do is demonstrate that you have it. So go to a place of peace. Just stay there for about 30 seconds to a minute. Allow that peace to come into your heart. That's the only proof that you trust God, is peace in your heart. Now, engender it. Feel the havingness. Feel the havingness as if you've already had it for the last five years. You solved this problem already, like five years ago. See, now we're going to use time and space on our side. We're going to use it for our advantage. We're flipping the script. Imagine you already have it. What has it felt like to have it? Think about what it feels like to already have the problem that's already been met. It's already been met. Completely done with it. Feel the sense of relief. And then do something even more than that. Rest in the sensation of that relief. Just drop right into it. Sink 
and drop right into it. Now here's a little secret. I'm gonna show you how to engender in the most powerful way. I want you to go ahead and I want you to close your eyes and look all the way up to the top of the ceiling. Just take your eyes and look up, but keep your eyelids closed. Just look all the way up and keep your eyelids closed. This creates alpha brain waves. Instant mega bursts of alpha brain waves are being created. You're lowering your brain waves. You're becoming far more receptive to auto suggestion and hypnosis, self hypnosis. So now from this position, since you already found the feeling that gets the blessing, you already found the relief. This is the time when you're going to use your word, which is your bond, and you're going to speak the completion of what it is you desire. I have, insert whatever it is you need. I have. Keep your eyes up, eyelids closed. I have. Feel the sense of relief. Okay. Now, you're of one mind, one power, one presence. You're in your imagination. You're at home with the Father in spirit. Now, when two or more come into agreement, you have a contract. So you have to drop all the other opinions out there. You have to give up the world. You have to give up your life in order to gain your life. See, your life that was out there is no longer valid. So blockchain it. Step into the world from this position of being, already having it, and be about it. Continue to show up in the world in this emotional place, in this place of having. I don't really care what happens outside of you because that world is a dead carcass. When you walk around your world, have what you desire from this moment forward. If you need a new car, then realize that that subatomic particle jalopy that you have outside is nothing but the same subatomic particle that will fill the same Bentley or the Lamborghini or whatever it is that you desire. So stay and sleep and rest in the sensation of having and continue to imagine as if it already is. You may be the only one that sees it that way, but it won't be for long. And that's how the process of creation works. That's how it all happens. But you have to drop the world out there. You see, in Romans 8 is the big thing. You see, you have to have the knowledge of all of this to apply it cohesively. Okay? This is brain-heart co cohesiveness. This is really the highest form of manifesting. So ask yourself before you take any action, is the seed of trying to compensate, you know, am I making a compens compensatory action from being not enough? Is that the seed I really want to plant? Does this feel uphill struggle based on my reasoning? If it does, then don't do it because you're just going to plant seeds of lack. It doesn't work. Or is it the fastest path to my joy in this moment? coming from a position of I'm complete within myself. And the Lord shall fight my battles if I hold my peace. You get that? See, the quality of your seed is the only influence you have over your future. And speaking of seeds, go to MatthewDavidHurtado.com and check out my material if you like this. You must keep remembering because every time you look out there, you become drunk with superstition and materialism. You must come from the Father to demonstrate. So what do you guys think about tonight's transmission? That's the completion. So Sasha says, I'm loving this. Um, Bobby says, I am the solution. Anisha says, quantum soup full of boogeymen. <laughs> uh, Gregory's here. We see him. We see Peggy. We see Bruce. Shay's here. Uh, who else do we got out there? Tristan. Okay. And now um, Mikhail liked the you got to cut it. He likes this. Um, yeah, Grecia. 
And let's see. Randy says, Randy Weiss says, this is awesome. Makes total sense. And Queensa says, powerful. And I blockchain billionaire from this second on. Thank you, man of God. You're welcome. It's only you and you out there. Remember, you're only running into yourself. Okay. Because that form, fashion form of fiction is not there. Anthony says, amen, Matthew Smith, Beverly, Stefan, Andrea. All right. So, well, it's been a pleasure to minister to you guys tonight. Um, you know, for everyone who sows to our ministry, thank you for the support. We love you. And we put it to good work. And, you know, this is uh, what we do. So Brian says, this was incredible. Roxana says, oh, my God, I'm speechless. This means everything. And Sabrina says, living this. Open my eyes, my true eyes, Christiane says. BC James, like it, it's powerful. Yeah, you know, this is the gospel. The gospel, gospel means good news. The word gospel means good news. This is the good news, is that you're free. The moment you decide to be free, you are. You know, this is the culmination of my whole life into like, I guess one seminar here, if you can really bring this into, you know, minus the self entrainment technique, if you could learn that in the safe touch, you know, that's what really my, my spiritual millionaire workshop is. And you can all learn that online too. You don't have to wait for the physical workshop anymore. And I'll teach, you know, even I'll teach flow state and, um, you know, how to, how to use some remote viewing things and some of the new stuff I've been doing at, in Puerto Rico here coming up in about a week or so. And uh, yeah, it's it's fun. It's it's exciting, and you will matter if you do this. This is what all of the ancient mystics have passed down throughout the you know through the generations. This is the this is the gospel. This is the real gospel. You'll discover that it is the secret to everything. So Beverly says thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Beverly. Anita says wow. Abel says, staying in peace. Abel and Judy, good to see you guys here. Staying in peace and material doesn't matter. That's correct. Randy Part says, today is 1124 and Mark 1124 says it well. Yes, sir. All right, so the head back look up is instant alpha. That's correct. What you do, instant alpha brainwaves. If you want to auto-suggest, I'm going to tell you secrets of auto-suggestion, okay? Emil Kuz said, when you speak auto-suggestion, don't use any human force or will. That just implies you're coming from lack. Right? If you're from God, you don't need to use any will. See, willpower is an animal propensity. Willpower is an animal propensity. You don't need willpower. When you have authority, all you have to do is speak. So he said to do it in a monotone way. Now I say do this. Lower your brain waves and then do it. So what I like to do is the box breath. Okay, That's in through the nose, five seconds. Hold at the top, five seconds. Out through the nose, five seconds. Hold at the bottom five seconds like a box. That's Commander Mark Divine of Seal Fit teaches that, and they train seals to do that stuff when they're going into battle, etc. This is one of their best techniques, according to him. So, the reason why it's so important is that it takes you out of that high beta fight or flight brainwave state, which is uh, very closed off, full of resistance, and it allows you to be much more in the moment. And when you're in the moment, well, you're also you know, the full awareness of what's going on, you have access to that and you're suggestible because your brain waves are lowering. Okay, like children from the age of zero to seven, they're like in an alpha theta state. That's why they're learning at a seven to one ratio. Children are learning at a seven to one ratio. That's why they don't want to obey you because they know they're smarter than you because they know that they're learning much faster than you. Okay, so you can put yourself back into that position again. And box breathing for a minute to three minutes will get you there with the breath. And also, you can create instant flashes of alpha brain waves by looking up with your eyes. Look all the way up and then close your eyelids. And hold your eyelids closed while your eyes look up. And you'll create instant flashes of alpha brain waves. And as you slow your breathing down, and as you release tension, release and relax the body, you'll become very suggestible. And then you just have to speak in terms of I have. And you can start using this for segment intending your day in your scenarios. Get up in the morning and set your intentions for the day like this. And more powerful than anything is before you go to bed, 
gratitude, become one, engender your desire before you go to sleep. Now here, I'll give you another secret. This is one of the secret of secrets, is set your alarm in the middle of the night. I don't have to do that because I usually get up to have a snack or go to the bathroom. So it's actually, I've turned a negative into a positive. I used to always be like, man, I don't want to get up at night. Why do I get up at night? Now I just said, this is perfect. It was a gift. When I get up in the middle of the night, I instantly have access to massive theta delta brain waves because I'm half asleep. So before I go full asleep again, let's say I go to the restroom, I come back, I just lay down and I start to go back into my imagination. And then I start to use those brain waves to fall asleep in that space. So you can use anything. So now Queens, it says, I bear witness. I sowed into the man of God and received a harvest in three days. Very good. I get a lot of testimonials like that because the three, two, one that I teach in my website isn't, you know, something I just conjured up out of thin air. It's what I did, you know, tithing, non-judgment and following the fastest path to your joy. Right? So when you tithe and you be tithe to our ministry, you will prosper because people do, because we do God's work. That's just the bottom line. So that's all there is to it, is you sow seed, okay? Get your judgments out of the way and follow the fastest path to your joy. It's like, this is, that three, two, one is so deep that I could probably do a week long workshop on that, but it's not necessary because if you just do it, you'll start to see that it's working and you'll be like, well, I don't know how it works all the way, but it's just doing something. That's all you need to know at least for now, just get things figured out and then figure out how you did it. So Anisha says, this is the good news. Connie Cruz says, love it. This has answered so many questions. Good. Jamil says, if the kingdom of heaven is the imagination, when the Bible says, until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force, does that mean God even accepts forced imagination for those who have trouble imagining clearly? Okay, so the violent, if you look outside of yourself to the world of violence and you allow that to engender seeds in your imagination, that is that means your imagination has been taken by force. See, that's why you have to know where you're getting your information from. You know, when I used to have anxiety disorder years and years ago, I used to have all of these tormenting thoughts go through my, my mind and all of these really negative scenarios. That is not benign. That is not harmless, okay? When you ponder and you reflect on things that God considers graven images, which is the entire world outside of you, but if you, if you contemplate evil and you allow that into your imagination, that's why I don't watch horror movies. I will not watch a horror movie. And I don't like to watch virtually almost any of the Hollywood movies these days because they're just selling that they're selling evil. And I don't want that in my imagination. So that's, that's really what we're talking about. Okay, so uh, yeah, Connie, the actions that are written in the Bible, the Sabbath day, Okay, so the Sabbath day, Sunday, that's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Even most of the secular Christians know that it's absolute nonsense. That's how they discovered their healing power, and they're starting to get it back, is because they realize the Sabbath day is the eternal day that you live in. You were created to live in the Sabbath day, which means you exist in the Sabbath, okay? The day of rest, okay? When Jesus rested, he received. So, yeah. The way that man looks at the Bible has been used to create all sorts of suffering on the planet. You don't want to look at the Bible from the way that man has done it through distorted language and through distorted opinions. You want to look at the way God sees God. How does God see God? That's the way you get there. So Marisol says, thank you, Matthew. I do really treasure your superb godly wisdom blessings. Thank you. And all right. Well, I'm going to let you guys get going. It's 922, and I hope you guys like this. Um, next Sunday, I don't think I'll be on next Sunday because we're going to be preparing for Puerto Rico. So we'll do a Wednesday night this week. Yeah, Sabrina most likely will do that. And then um, I'll see you guys in Puerto Rico who are coming out there. And for you not going out there, hey, work on this material till I get back. And... You know, and I'll bring you some good news from Puerto Rico and some new insights that come because we always get new insights. And we'll be back there. So Anita says, please explain auto-suggestion again and using the eye roll. Okay. Well, auto-suggestion is talking. It's hypnotizing yourself through non-aggressive language. So 
You don't need to say, oh, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, that you're implying that you're not. If you're trying to use force and tell yourself that you're rich, it means you're not. Do you get that? Like, if you really thought you were, you wouldn't say it like that. So who are you being when you do it? Are you being impoverished and say, I am something I'm not? Well, that doesn't work. You're not going to get there from there. Now, if you really were rich and you'd say, I'm rich, right? I got this. I'm rich. See, that's a lot more coming from the position of being rich, isn't it? So if you use willpower, you're, a, you're making confirmation that you don't have it. That's why affirmations typically don't work because you, unless you beat yourself up to the point where you become so tired and exhausted that your brain finally starts to rest and you start to give up the willpower, then it might start working. But you don't have to start from there. You just start from the, start from the end. Know that the kingdom is already complete. You exist from it. And put yourself into an optimized brain state so that you're more connected to the spirit realm. That's why you lower the brain waves. Beta brain waves are very much connected to the world of, you know, out there, high focus. You know, if you're being hunted by a predator, beta brain waves are great because you're going to have to like be very much in that realm. But you want to be more in a relaxed state when you're programming yourself through hypnot hypnotizing yourself through language. Oh. Connie says that the Sabbath day was the seventh day. Uh, well, you can believe whatever you want. I mean, I, the Sabbath day, it, according to the ancient wisdom, is, is the day that knows no night. It is the eternal. See, you're supposed to say in your heart that I am this perfect day. That's what it says in the gospel of truth, okay? I am this perfect day. That's the Sabbath day. I am, which means that I exist in God Therefore, I can rest all of my cares, my worries, and my concerns. See, because when you do that, you're coming from having the complete kit within yourself. You're not, see, you're not being like other people that are trying to strive, striving, 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 but never arriving. All right. Okay, guys, the replay will be good for you if you want to catch more. There's a lot in here, so you guys have a good night, and um, we'll talk to you soon. Take care, and God bless. Hey, Matthew, David, this is Gregory Lee. I appreciate all your, uh, your, your work and your processes, and I really appreciate the training, and I wanted to let you know that I had a breakthrough this week. I was stuck at uh, uh, making only $1,000 a week over the last uh, uh, three months. And uh, this, this past week, I did 3000 You can see the check right there. It's just fantastic. And I, I, I'm so excited and really appreciate that. And this is coming out to you, uh, the Golden Rock Award box. It's one of my products. You can see that. And then, and then when you open the box. Hey, Matthew, thanks for everything. You rock. You rock, Matthew David. You rock. Keep it going. Yes.